Week one of the college football season has come and gone, and boy did it live up to the hype. There was a lot to unpack, but today I'm going to be sharing my 10 most impressive teams from the first weekend of college football. These are the teams that I thought looked really good and also sort of shocked me by their performance. But before we get to today's video, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications if you're new to the channel. If you love college football content like this, then this is definitely the place for you. Also, drop a comment down below and share with me who the most impressive teams were for you. It helps the algorithm of the video and helps share the video with more college football fans. Plus, I'd love to see which teams you thought stood out. If there are any other college football videos you'd like to see similar to this, comment down below and that very well could turn into my next video. These are in no particular order, but the team that impressed me the most this weekend was Georgia. Personally, I didn't give them a shot to beat Clemson and I will admit that I was wrong. This Georgia team looks like they could be national championship contenders after what they did to the Tigers. Now, granted, their offense did look pretty bad. Hell, they didn't even have an offensive touchdown this weekend. But this defense, man, this Georgia defense. They held Clemson to only 180 yards, including a number that is truly unbelievable that I had to double check that this stat was true. Only two rushing yards. The Clemson Tigers, the number three team in the country, had only two rushing yards. The rushing attack was essentially a non-factor all night, and the passing game wasn't much better either. This Georgia front line was a problem all night, and it seemed like they were getting past Clemson's O-line with ease. They finished the game with seven sacks and eight tackles for loss. It seemed like DJ Uyunglele never had any time, and he truly didn't. This was probably one of the best defensive performances I can remember in at least the past decade, and I think this Georgia defense in 2021 is really going to be something special. Again, their offense is pretty concerning. If they had lost, I'm sure I'd be going more in depth on their lack of production. But ultimately though, I think they figure it out, and I think JT Daniels will get them back on track. But for now, this Georgia team is my number two pick to win the national championship this season. My number one pick? Yeah, that's still going to be Alabama. It's amazing that Alabama could still impress me, but my god, did they look good. I was in Las Vegas for the weekend, and I was stupid enough and bet on Miami plus the 19. You know, I really thought Miami could keep it within three scores, but it's safe to say I've learned my lesson moving forward. Alabama, well, they just look as good as they ever have, and Bryce Young... Yeah, that kid is the real deal. He had 350 yards and four touchdowns, and by the way, it was his first career start. Out of all the quarterbacks Alabama has had over the years, he could end up being the best of the bunch. I get that De'Ara King probably wasn't 100%, but this Alabama defense just manhandled Miami all game long. They had four sacks, seven tackles for loss, and four pass breakups. Again, I know Miami's not going to be in contention for the playoff, but they still were ranked number 14 to start the season, and Alabama made them look like Mercer out there. We all know how this is going to play out the rest of the season. Alabama's going to go undefeated, beat every team by at least 30 points and cover the spread, and their matchup against Georgia at the end of the year is going to be the call football game of the season. The UCLA Bruins are next on this list, and boy is it weird seeing UCLA look good again. After years and years of underperforming and looking really bad under Chip Kelly, the Bruins finally look like they have a team that's going to be competing in the Pac-12. They dominated number 16 LSU and really looked like a top 15 team while doing it. Dorian Thompson Robinson only completed 9 passes and only attempted 16, but he still threw for 260 yards with 3 touchdowns and he looked the best I've ever seen him look. The rushing attack with Zach Charbonnet and Britton Brown is going to be a problem and likely one of the top running back duos in the entire country as they rush for over 200 yards with 2 touchdowns. I guess we're just going to have to wait and see how this season plays out for LSU to determine just how good of a win this is for the Bruins. I think that LSU was overranked from the beginning and there's a solid chance that they're a 500 team again. But man, UCLA has a really good offense and a really good defense. All offseason, I've been saying watch out for the Bruins in the Pac-12 as a potential sleeper, and again, I know it's been two weeks, but they look like they're legit, and they're going to be fighting for a spot in the Pac-12 title game this year. I think a lot of people forgot that Penn State finished the 2020 season as one of the hottest teams in college football. Well, they picked up right where they left off, as they won a great game on the road at Wisconsin. 
When talking about great defenses in the Big Ten, the Nittany Lions may have the best this year. Now, I don't think Graham Mertz is that good of a quarterback, but Penn State, they made him look like a third stringer out there. He averaged only five yards a throw, and he threw two interceptions. Meanwhile, Penn State held Wisconsin to only three yards a carry, which is pretty insane considering it seemed like Wisconsin broke off numerous big runs. The defense had six tackles for loss, four pass breakups, and two quarterback hurries, and they were just making the plays all game. Now, Penn State's offense looked serviceable, and I'm not sure how much I can count on Sean Clifford moving forward. Still, I didn't think that Penn State would go in and their defense would dominate the way they did, let alone walk out of Wisconsin with a victory. If you've listened to my videos over the last few weeks, you know that I was super high in Louisiana this week over Texas. I had them as an upset pick, and I thought that they really could go into Austin and win the game. Well, the Longhorns made sure to make my pick look silly. It was a great debut for head coach Steve Sarkeesian as Texas beat number 23 Louisiana by 20 points. Hudson Card made his first career start and looked pretty good as he threw for 200 yards with two touchdowns while adding a touchdown on the ground as well. Bijan Robinson is as good as advertised as he had 100 yards on the ground with a touchdown and four catches for 70 yards and a touchdown through the air. Now, it's only one game, so I'm not going to say that Texas is back just yet, but this was certainly a really nice start to the season for Steve Sarkeesian's new team. Before I get to my next five teams, if you could give this video a thumbs up, I would greatly appreciate it. It helps share the video with more college football fans and it only takes a second to do. One of the toughest games for me to figure out going into the weekend was the Iowa-Indiana game. I had no clue who would win and I really had it as a coin flip. Well, of course, this one ended up not being even close. Iowa's defense is what won them the game as they had two pick sixes and held Indiana to only six points. Michael Penix Jr. looked awful, which may be because it was his first game back since his ACL injury. But still, Iowa made Indiana look awful out there. I know I said earlier that Penn State might have the best defense in the Big Ten, but after watching full highlights from this game, I might have to change my pick to the Hawkeyes. Now, their offense wasn't great, but when your defense is playing like this, you don't really have to be. In case you missed this game on Friday, which is very likely considering it started at 10pm Eastern, UCF had quite the comeback against Boise State. The Knights were trailing 21 to nothing at one point, but came back and won the game 36 to 31. It was a thrilling game, and the Knights made their case for being one of the top group of five teams in the country this season. Now, they have Dylan Gabriel, who in my opinion is a top 10 quarterback in college football. He led the comeback as he threw for 300 yards with four touchdowns, three of which came in the span of only 15 minutes. After a shaky first half defensively, UCF held Boise State to only seven points in the second half. They forced a fumble, forced a safety, and had an interception in the second half. It was a great comeback win for Gus Malzahn, who was the new head coach after his lengthy tenure at Auburn. I didn't have USC on upset watch, but I definitely thought San Jose State could be able to hang around with them. Now, they kind of did for the first half, but USC really stepped it up in the second half as they beat the Spartans by 23. USC's offense was solid as Keaton Slovis threw for 250 yards and a touchdown, and USC added 160 yards on the ground. But what stood out to me was USC's defense. San Jose State scored 45 points last week, and Nick Starkle was a really underrated quarterback last season in the Mountain West. But they just had no answer on offense and couldn't get anything going. He completed only 50% of his passes and threw two interceptions. USC held San Jose State to only 70 yards on the ground as well. The Trojans are going to have a fantastic season this year with their offense, as Keaton Slovis is going to be a Heisman candidate, and they have some really good wide receivers and running backs. But if this defense can step up on a week-to-week -week basis, I think USC can not only be in the Pac-12 championship hunt, but potentially the playoff hunt as well. Michigan State was awful last season, and I was expecting them to be just as bad this year. Well, they look damn good against Northwestern, who many had as having a top 5 defense in college football this season. The over-under on this game was 45, and the Spartans themselves scored 38. Now, I should say it wasn't necessarily the Spartans' offense, it was more so running back Kenneth Walker III, who rushed for 260 yards with 4 touchdowns. He literally was most of their offense, but it was still a very impressive team effort from the Spartans. Now, I'm not quite sure if Michigan State is going to be a 500 team this season, but this was a great way to start the season, especially against a team that was in the Big Ten title game just last year. We're going to wrap up this video with the only team on here who actually lost their game, but they're deserving of being on this list. Tulane was a 31-point underdog, and yet they almost took down the number two team in the country on the road. Well, technically at home. 
After Tulane had to relocate due to the hurricane, they easily could have been blown out in this game. But they looked competitive and showed that the sportsbooks were crazy for that point spread. They were tied at 14 at the end of the first quarter, but fell behind by 23 going into the half. At that point, they easily could have given up and just focused on next week, but they outscored the Sooners 20-3 in the second half. Tulane even had a chance to win the game with two minutes left, but they came up just short. Michael Pratt was excellent as he threw for 300 yards and three touchdowns while adding a touchdown on the ground. Major props to Tulane's defense as they had two interceptions and held Oklahoma's offense in check in the second half. Again, the Sooners scored only three points in the final two quarters. Considering all they went through this past week and the fact they had to go play this game in Norman, what a performance from the Green Wave. Well, there are the 10 teams who impressed me the most from this weekend. Drop a comment down below and let me know the teams who really caught your eye from week one. Was there a team on here that I didn't include? Let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't done so yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. I'll be posting videos like this all week and all season, so if you're a college football fan, then this is definitely the place for you. If there are any other college football videos you'd like to see that are similar to this, drop a comment down below and that very well could turn into my next video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video.